It's time to stop by the asylum and see how the patients are doing in Psychobabble from Outset Media Games, who we have to thank for talking us into taking a review copy home from Origins. As an advisement to listeners, this game uses a Cthulhu-esque theme and makes use of the words insane and insanity, as well as concepts of therapy within the game in a manner inappropriate for common language today outside of this semi-historical theme. Psychobabble was designed by Kendrick Winks and features truly fantastic artwork from Eric York. It was originally published by Cheatwell Games in 2022, but is being put out here in North America by Outset Media Games. This mythos-themed social deduction party game plays 4 to 11 players, with a single round of the game taking well under half an hour. The weight here is a bit higher than some social deduction games, and that's mainly due to the fact that there are three different roles in play and different win conditions for each of them. So in Psychobabble, inmates in an asylum have had a shared dream. Some great old one or something is trying to communicate with them. That is all except one of the inmates who is genuinely insane and had a completely different dream of their own. Now, the trick is no one knows who's insane, not even the insane player. Now, the therapist is trying to figure out what the shared dream was, and the inmates are trying to hide this information while also trying to figure out which one of them is the insane one. For a look at the remarkable looking cards and their art that you get with this shared hallucination, check out our Psycho Babble unboxing on YouTube. Now, along with the large tarot sized cards and their great artwork, you also get a deck of cards for randomizing what dreams everyone's had, a pair of D6 dice, and a rule book. The rules are quite clear and well explained, and the physical quality of everything is excellent. The only issue I have here, component-wise, is this game is competing with Splendor for the most air in a box. Well, next up, let's get into how you manage all of these fantastical experiences. So one of the big benefits of this game has over as many social deduction games is there's no moderator required. While the therapist kind of runs the session, they are a player as well and has their own role to play. The therapist role starts by sorting the dream selection cards into four decks, then creating a small play deck consisting of a number of cards from one deck equal to the other players in the game minus one, and one card from a different deck. These need to be well shuffled so even the therapist doesn't know who's getting what card. Now while this is happening, the rest of the players should lay out the dream cards. There are four different decks of these, and you just make a grid by laying out four cards from each of the four decks, ending up with a 16-card grid. Then the dream selection cards are handed out to the inmates, who should look at their own card but hide that information from all the other players. At the same time, the therapist rolls the two dice, and the inmates identify the matching spot on their selection card, and then use that to figure out what dream card represents rents the dream they just had. Now, once everyone's identified their card, you're ready to start the round. Now, each round of Psycho Babble starts with the inmates describing their dream, starting with the player to the left of the therapist. Players are free to describe these however they want, with as much detail as they want, but should be aware that the goal of the game for an inmate is to figure out which of them is insane and not let the therapist know what the dream they share. Now, after each player has described their dream, each inmate gets the chance to ask one question about the dream of one other inmate. This, again, can basically be anything they want, and the player is asked is free to answer however they want, which can, but often doesn't need to, include lying. Once all inmates have asked each other questions, it's now the therapist's time to do final interviews. They get to ask each inmate one final question and can go in any order. This is their last chance to identify the shared dream. Now, after this final Q&A, play moves to the inmates, again, starting with the one to the left of the thera therapist. All vote on who is insane. But once you've determined who has the most votes, ties who are broken by the therapist, the therapist puts the dice onto the card they think was the shared dream. Now, all of the dream selection cards are revealed. Now, assuming the therapist dealt everything out right, all but one inmate should have the same card. They're labeled A, B, C, or D. The insane inmate will be the one with a different card. If the therapist puts the dice on the proper card, representing the shared dream, they win and the round is over. If the therapist was wrong, the sane inmates win if they identified the insane one among them, and the insane one wins if the inmates pick the wrong person. You're then welcome to play another round with the therapist passing to the player on their left. 
Now, when playing with four or five players, we usually play until every player has been the therapist once. And I don't know if you'll want to do that with 11 players, but that's an option. Now, with that play overview done, it's time to move on to some of our thoughts on Psychobabble. But first, we want to address the elephant in the room. The language in this game is problematic, and we understand that. While we do not wish to minimize mental illness or its treatment, this game represents a fictional theme and era that is you that use these terms in this way. Yeah, actually, after one of our first games of Psychobabble, we were kind of talking about it. Like, couldn't you just use other terms, especially with a mythos theme? Like, this could have been less ab- ableist by just having it be an investigator who's interviewing townsfolk, where one of the townsfolk is secretly a cultist. But it is what it is. So let's talk about the game. And we'll let people make their own choices about the language used. So first off, I want to point out the only reason we're even talking about this game is that the rep from Outset Media insisted we take a copy home from Origins. Now, as fans of the show know, I don't generally like social deduction games, and that's being nice. They are the only genre game I will actively avoid and turn down playing. Now, I explained this to the man at Origins, and we also even brought up the uh, the terminology used in the game, but he wouldn't take no for an answer. He insisted we do a short demo, which we did. And even then, after saying, okay, it's better than I expected, man, that art's cool, it's really not our kind of game, they were like, no, you must take this game. Uh, He went so far to say if we didn't take this, we weren't allowed to take Zensu, which was the game we actually wanted to take home and review from them. So wait a minute, I'm wondering, this guy was a cultist, wasn't he, right? Like this was just his plot to spread the old one's new game to the masses so we could all have the same shared dream? It's funny you should say that, because I had this dream... Yeah, anyway, this guy was so convinced we would enjoy this game. Even with me not liking social deduction games, they basically forced us to take it home. And you know what? He was right. Let that be a lesson to people. Know your game, know your market, and don't take no for an answer. This fellow was risking a bad review from us, but was so confident in the product that there was no other option but for us to take it. Now, while that first demo didn't really sell me on the game, after playing it with the kids and bringing it out to one of our barbershop bar events, I got to see what makes this game stand out from other social deduction party games. And for me, that's two key things. The first one is you are not forced to lie. You and everyone at the table can play this game without spreading a lie. Lying is not necessary or needed to play Psycho Babble. And while it is permitted, Often, that's not the best option when that choice comes up. This game is all about figuring out who the insane person is and not giving too much info to the therapist, at least for the inmates, which are the majority of the players in most games. You want people to figure out you had the same dream as you did, as they did. Now, one of the things I dislike most about social deduction games is being forced to lie to my friends and fellow gamers and possibly even more so, the bad feelings that can come out during and at the end of a game like that. You don't get that here at all. Now, while you can lie, there's almost a sort of nod and a wink included with lies here. As you're working with some people, and not others, or in some cases, utterly confused as to what's going on, and not even sure if you're one of the dreamers or out on your own. The fact there's a hidden traitor rule but no one knows who that is, including the trader, really is brilliant. This is the second thing to me that's so great about this game. Because you no longer have that oddness where there's a stupid phase in the game where, like, you house rule it so you don't give away who the trader is. Like, oh, okay, I'm going to hand you out roll cards and everyone stare at it for at least a minute because the designer made it so that the trader card has way more text than the ones that say you're not a trader and we'll give it away if you're reading the card longer or there's everyone on the table so no one can hear the trader moving and pointing at people right i'm I'm sure people know what games i'm talking about the other thing though is it also removes the stress of being the trader because depending on the type of person you are Suddenly being that special role, that special outsider, and having to play the game different from everyone else can be off-putting and not fun for a lot of players. Plus, you're going to have to betray everyone, and not everyone's cool with that. Now, generally speaking, the only real opportunity for lies exists within the dreamers, once they've determined who the other dreamers likely are. 
Now, I'm going to mention a third thing as well that I also appreciate, and that's the fact that there's no moderator required. Now, I will say this is kind of an old problem that's not really around anymore. Most modern social deduction games have found a way to eliminate that role. But I really like the way Psychobabble does it by making the therapist role a mix of moderator and player. They're actively involved the whole time. They have to be listening to what everyone else is saying, and they have to ask appropriate questions. They need to be paying attention. They're not just sitting back and running the game to watch to see what happens. This is a great way to introduce and teach the game to others, as you can play mm. the role of therapist, and no one else really needs to know anything other than the absolute basics to start playing. And that's how I teach this game. I literally just start the game. I, I shuffle the cards, do all the stuff in the background. I get things ready, and I'm the one to start asking people questions. I play the therapist the first round. And then often at our public play events, I didn't step away and let the group go after that. Now, where I do find Psycho Babble stumbles a bit is at higher player counts. What I've found is the more players who are inmates, who are all trying to describe the exact same card without describing it too clearly, the easier it is for the therapist to figure out what card that is. And so far, we found that once you get up to like six players, it's almost impossible for all the inmates to be vague enough to mislead the therapist. And if they turn to lying to throw the therapist off, then the inmate is too hard to spot and the game goes to that player instead of the therapist. So under the higher the player count, the harder it is for the biggest group of players. Which is interesting because the community right now has six to eight as the best. Mm -hmm. So it would be interesting to hear other people's experiences. Let us know in the comments or on social media if you're a fan of these higher player counts of this game. Now, the thing, though, is I'm saying it stumbles, right? It trips a bit. It, it kind of falls over itself because who cares if the therapist wins the most often? And who cares if if people lying too much gives it to the, the inmate, the insane one? Like, it's a party game. Like most party games, most people playing party games don't really care who won or who had the most points. The, the fun of this game is the experience you had playing together. And there is a lot of fun to be had in describing your dreams based on cards and asking other people and hearing other people's descriptions and the back and forth and laughing out loud when someone asks the perfect question or someone gives an answer and you're like, what? That makes it but ah. And really, we haven't talked about the card art here yet, yeah. which is very worth mentioning. Now, before that, though, another thing worth bringing up is that this game does require some thinking on your feet. There is an improv element here that may turn off some players. No, this isn't some kind of narrative RPG. You're not expected to come up with a whole character backstory based on the cards you've chosen. Um, you're just describing what you see on an art card. And the amount you say isn't determined by the rules at all. Like you can just say, tell me about your dream. Go, it was spiky. That's it. You're done. You've done your description. Now, I have noticed that actual indie RPG players tend to be a little bit more elaborate when describing their dreams. But that's not at all required here. Now, how much or how little of this art you describe really can help or hinder the eventual outcome. But there's also mm -hmm. a good chance that your description, no matter how involved, still might not help. Yeah, and that's because of the fantastic art in this game, right? One of the brilliance of the art here is how similar things there are in all the cards. Like, it's not quite a game of spot it where there's at least one similarity in every card. But you can describe sparky, Spiky, and it might mean 12 of the 16 cards on the table, and then someone else will say Windows. Now you've narrowed it down to six, but you still only got it down to six. And I just love the way this art works. Like, it's it's got an early D&D &D line drawing, Earl Otis, kind of mashed with Jack Kirby's cosmic Marvel weirdness and some modern dungeon crawl classic line art style that I just love. I think it's fantastic. And then even cooler is each individual deck of cards. I and mean, there's four different decks. They each have kind of a different theme to them. When you set them up so the cards are next to each other, they form a trippy panorama, which just looks great. Like the card artwork is actually the main reason I agreed to take this game home. Because I'm like, if nothing else, I get a bunch of really cool cards and I kind of want to use them to make a DCC adventure at some point. So the art here tends towards both abstract and repeatable in concept if not actual features. Again, with like mm -hmm. that spiky and windows, uh, so the description you're giving may actually refer to multiple cards without you even knowing, or perhaps very yeah. deliberately doing knowing so on your part. Yeah, overall, I gotta say I'm impressed by Psychobabble. 
Like here you have a social deduction party game that even I can enjoy. It avoids what I consider the pitfalls of most social deduction games by not requiring lying and making it so the outsider doesn't know they're an outsider. I've had a lot of fun playing Psycho Babble, and it has been a huge hit with the local gaming community. As someone who also avoids social deduction, I too was on the fence. But sitting down and playing four or five rounds of it in a row was really great fun. And that was with both kids and adults at the table. I immediately wanted to introduce the game to others at public events. So if you enjoy social deduction games in general, if you play games like Werewolf, The Resistance, or even Battlestar Galactica or its re-theme Unfathomable, you're going to want to add Psycho Babble to your collection. Well, it does change things up a bit. I don't think there's anything here that takes away from what you know and love. I don't think there's anything that would turn away social deduction fans. If what you love about them is lying to your fans, you can still do that in this game. You just don't have to. While perhaps not as problematic as some games, the terms used in this game may turn off some people, and that's understandable. Yeah. I do think it's worth mentioning to new players before settling in for a game to avoid any awkwardness or discomfort. While these are common tropes in uh, Eldritch fiction, the game needs to be presented in that way. Now, if you're looking for a big group party game with lots of talking and interaction, lots of social things going on here, Psycho Babble could be the perfect game. I don't know a lot of games that go up to 11 players that don't involve a lot of dice, drawing, or trivia. This one is great for getting people talking, both in-game, but also after each round when players are asking each other, what do you mean by this? Or what the heck, you said spooky. Where's the spooky on that card? I thought you meant something completely different. Oh, you said spiky. Wow, I heard that wrong. ha, ha, ha. It's also quick, so playing multiple rounds, even at large player counts, doesn't eat up a lot of time. It gives players opportunities to take on the multiple roles. Now, the important group I hope this review reaches and goes out to, and I'm worried it won't because we're immediately calling it a social deduction game and people are going to tune out, is people like me, people who don't generally like social deduction games. You might want to give this a shot, just like I did. I had way more fun talking about shared dreams and mythos landscapes than I thought I would. At this point, I expect this is going to become a barbershop bar regular, and I can totally see breaking this out at the next birthday party or gaming in the new year. Well, there you have it, a social deduction game that even won over Mo. Thanks, Outset Games, for convincing him to bring this one home. We say it often, not every game is for everyone, and that's awesome. But what was the last game that you didn't think would be your cup of tea, but that you ended up really enjoying? Tell us about it in the comments below. I'll get a look at some of the great looking cards in the game by checking out my written review of Psycho Babble over the blog at tabletopbellhop.com. And if you enjoyed this review, I also encourage you to tip your bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop.